Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the home build. This video is going to be all about lessons learned. And so far, we still haven't even had sheetrock yet, but there's all kinds of lessons to learn and to think about and to know uh, even at this stage. So there's probably going to be another video later on about lessons learned then. But I do want to share several things that that I've learned that uh, didn't happen or that were done wrong and that sort of thing so that at least maybe that on your home build you can do those things correctly or, or keep an eye out for them to make sure they're being done. So let's start with the, the first thing. The first thing that that I found that was done wrong was kind of in a sense almost just trusting the, the electrician. So what I wanted to do was install two car chargers. They were 50, I knew I wanted a 50 amp breakers uh, for two electric cars and then also they could be welders later or some other 240 outlet. Well the electrician said uh, install an 8 gauge Eight, an 8-3, eight, three. eight gauge, three wire, or three conductors, um, and that sort of thing. So that's what I installed. So you can kind of see that's what this is right here. It's non-metallic sheathing. So that's what that is. So if you want to check to see what um, amps for a breaker that that uh, you need for whatever you're doing, check your check the the electrical code to see what uh, the, the conductor can hold and what what uh, uh, breaker uh, what amp breaker can handle um, so I knew that I wanted a 50 amp breaker that's just something that I, I knew that I, I needed or wanted and trusting them that's what they told me to do is install an 8 gauge 3 wire well now I, I, I installed it and uh, Something in my gut was just telling me that it just isn't right, just from what I know. So then, then I went on, started doing some research, went on to basically Chevy Bolt, Tesla, all their websites and seeing what they needed. And they said, they specified a six gauge wire, not an eight gauge. So the lower the gauge, the bigger the conductor, until you get into aughts, they're even bigger, you know? And, and that sort of thing. So. They, they suggested a 50 amp, uh, or recommended, a 50 amp breaker on a six gauge, six three wire. So the three conductors allows you to have a 240. So right there, that was wrong. And then I started just doing a lot of research on YouTube, kind of like what you're doing, and, and they're all saying six gauge, and I'm like, what the heck? So then I even went to the electrical code to see what uh, conductor a, 50 amp breaker can handle. And come to find out, an eight gauge can, but not this type of wire. Okay, an HTTM, I think is what it is. Uh, it can handle it, but it's, uh, I believe that's in a conduit and it's just the wire. This, the non-metallic sheathing, is, not, is only rated for 40 amps. So I wouldn't even be, if I put in a 50 amp breaker for one, it's not by code. So that would have probably eventually failed and everything would have been covered up. So it would have been too late. So, uh, and that sort of thing. So I just was looking at it and a six gauge wire will handle this type, uh, a, a, a non-metallic sheathing, um, six gauge wire can handle a 50 amp breaker. And it has to do with temperature and other things, but uh, that's what I wanted. So then therefore, I'm at that point where <laughs> I had to go buy a six gauge, six three, non-metallic. Uh, that way it could be it buried in the walls. Um, part of the other thing is that I, I'm putting sheet, uh, sheet rock and insulation and that sort of thing. And I don't want any risk of fire or any of that sort of thing. I want things to be done right. So doing my research, that's what I uh, need to install. Uh, what it's cost me at this point so far is about $400 in wire. So that was just to throw away that, that 83 wire. Um, so if anybody out there needs about 25, about 30, 45 feet or so, 45 feet. Yeah. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Might be a giveaway. <laughs> but anyhow, um, 
So I, what it's cost me is I gotta rip that out, put it back in. Luckily, I start thinking on it because I'm a nerd when it comes to construction. I'm always researching, thinking, and staying up late, uh, thinking about this thing. I at least caught it at this stage, so now I can at least just rip it out, put it in, and then it's gonna be ready for uh, the correct amp. So 50 amp breaker, the correct conductor size, which is a six three uh, conductors, which is what this wire is, and that sort of thing, and just a little bit of time. So that's one, that's number one. And watch the process, I mean, watch me rip it out and put it back. All right, now that we got the electrical outlet swapped out, fixed, no harm, no foul, than 400 bucks, um, we'll go on to the next lesson learned. And the next lesson learned is, see that little triangle up there where all that duct work is? There's a soffit on that outside. Let's go to the outside. So it's up above here. Right up above this soffit here, there's a little triangle. And that rise on that triangle does not have any house wrap on it. So, as you can see, there's venting. So, moisture, air is going up through there. And, you know, heat rises. So, ideally, as it goes out that little end, because there's no vents up at the top, goes out and up to the roof and on out. So but what air brings with it is moisture since there's no vapor barrier on that section of the house possibly air could be pushed in or sucked in through that uh, osb sheathing because that's all that is up there through a joint in the sheathing or something like that and then into the house so that would bring moisture could bring mold could bring pollen could bring other things that we don't want so that's a lesson learned that before these trusses, because this section here was trusses, little teeny things, they should have put uh, Tyvek drain wrap or some sort of, because that's what this product was, or some compatible um, vapor barrier up there. Put that on first and then attach the trusses and uh, bolt those on, lag those on, however they were attached. But... That should have been on should, should have been done first and it could have gone all the way down tying in the vapor bear down here up with a with the one above so that's a, a missed area there's a as far as going back i'm not going to tear all this apart to put that on that just does not make fence or, or uh, sense so what I'm gonna do on the inside though, is to help keep that air from being sucked in, is kind of like what I did down here on the first floor. See the spray foam in those corners? So I did that. All the outlets are gonna have spray foam all around to seal those up. Any penetrations going at the top, I'm gonna be doing that as well as the plate to the subfloor I'm gonna be caulking all that up in those particularly in that location all right we're up here on the second floor and as you can see there's a that let that uh, blocking right there is the top of that roof line if you look out there so this area here is gonna get sealed up as best I can up the studs this area here air can be coming in all those locations I already have some of the spray foam done, but still got to get at that OSB and at the floor level. That helps with this area. And then down on the first floor up in the ceiling, if we go back down there, uh, there's a section up there as well. So now keep in mind that was this particular house for that section there. A lot of builders, they know that and they do it and they take care of it, but this builder didn't do it so this subcontractor didn't do it 
so that was something I had to do after so um, being on top of your framers and looking at those during the process of framing just making sure they do that if you're a framer make sure you throw those things on there because it just it's it, it protects the house better so lesson number four on the list is your outlets on the outside trying to do incorporate your waterproofing like this so when this gets made up and your outlet goes on it's all nice and waterproofed has a gasket but it's all sealed up for air probably even oh, can't see but on the inside it's it's spray foamed it's tied into the uh, vapor barrier paying attention to something like that protecting your house so that they're not just doing something like this where they're just drilling a hole and they're going to surface mount something not tying into the the waterproofing so it's gonna it could leak for water uh it, air can get through it and all that sort of thing all they would be relying on is caulking which is not right it should be tied into the vapor bearer behind the siding so that's kind of a lesson learned um these i i knew about so i installed those but i'm i'm actually kind of wanting to test the electrician to see what quality of job that they do for their waterproofing because that's just as important as the electrical being done right because i don't want any mold rot that sort of thing behind in the framing this would be something i can change out to that later but i'm half tempted to see what the electricians are going to come up with on that so that's number four. number five in the process for lessons learned so I'm going to have a downspout that's going to be coming right here, tying in to my underground plumbing. Um, I went ahead and I caulked that. I haven't caulked anything else on the outside of the siding, but that is an area that it's going to get gutters here pretty soon before paint, which isn't ideal. You'd like to paint first, but we're in winter and I won't be able to paint for several more months and it will have to all get caulked for my final. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it's all primed, so it doesn't have to be painted for the final, but it does have to be caulked. So getting that caulking done before the gutter goes on, that's important to get a good quality job, as well as cleaning your cement board real well before applying the caulking. So that is number five. So lesson learned number six. All those low voltage uh, like speakers and cameras and low voltage for security systems all those type of wiring things you need to start thinking of when it's got a open framed structure like this so things that i learned to to do was running all my hdmi uh, which oh, excuse me this is ethernet hdmi cables from my tv to a central location of where uh, the media center is going to be in this case the plan is it's going to be over in this corner i'm giving the option to have it here just below the tv i don't really like that i might want to uh, eventually build a fireplace or something here but it's going to be in that corner which then i plan that i could put it on the inside if i need to uh, right now i got, currently got it on the outside and then as all all of my internet uh, communication type uh, um, uh, cat5 is all going to be going right into that well, so I have a from the main I have a, co or a coax going to there so then that's where my modem is going to be uh, and and everything where everything's going to plug in and transfer over to for internet so over there uh, ideally lesson learned with the, this would be in one same location rather than right here and over there I would have just tied it all over onto the one side, but uh, I don't want to redo all that wiring. So this also includes all the speaker wire. So you can see I got a, some speaker wire right up here, coiled up, ready to go. Um, I have another one over here. So this living room is going to have six locations for speakers. So thinking of your surround sound type of thing, because I want to be able to have my TV. I don't want a sound bar or some other thing there. I just want my TV. And when I turn it on, I can, all the sound just coming all around for better sound and quality. So 
thinking of all those things now, which early on I didn't. And I, you know, we're just about to that point where they're going to come out and insulate and it would be in a pain to do it after insulation. And it would have been even more of a pain if it was uh, sheet rocked and all done. So got that in, which I'm really happy. I thought about that. Uh, I stay up late sometimes or wake up in the middle of the night dreaming and thinking about all these things. So that is a lot of things, but that is number six. So number seven is I'm going to be running a lot more um, Cat 5. Um, and what that Cat 5 is going to be for is for a future security system. So where, you, where the keypad is going to be, I need to run from my modem, which will be right here inside underneath the stairs. It's going to go up and over and over here by the front door. And either I'm going to put it, coil up some wire here, which uh, probably not there. I'm actually going to put it on the inside right in here so that if I come through the garage door, I can just run over it and turn the alarm off or through the front door. This door here, already planning, is going to be a right-hand door, so it won't be in the way of this keypad. So if it was a left-hand door, like this, it would just block that um, keypad and it wouldn't work. So the door swing is going to be correct for that, so that kind of saves me a little bit of wire, but I'm going to put it right here. And then also one more location for another keypad for an alarm is going to be in the, the master suite. So here's the master suite, closet, bathroom. I'm not going to put it in here in the, in the bedroom. I'm actually going to put it probably here in the bathroom. That was recommended to me by a security company. It's probably putting it somewhere right here. And that gives that because it has a constant light, like a night light type of thing. I don't want that in my bat my bedroom. So I'm gonna coil up some wire right here and have it right here. So if that's for um, the, the keypad. The other thing is for security cameras, thinking of where security cameras would be to at least get the Ethernet over to it and they can run power over ethernet so it would power the cameras all that sort of thing so going from underneath the stairs up and over i think i'm going to coil up some wire up here in this corner or two runs of wire over in that corner to shine that section of the property and then also the driveway and then i'm going to have another coiled up uh, ethernet over by the front door so Thinking of where to run that now would be great. I got the wire, get it run, and that's what I'm gonna be working on next. All right, so the next lesson learned was not double checking all of the dimensions for the windows, door openings, that sort of thing. So as an example, like that window, uh, actually both of these windows, a couple windows on the other side, uh, they were so tight, that rough opening, that I didn't have room to shim, room to do the pre-wrap as well. Uh, and then actually the sliding glass door on the back side, the header was down a little too tall, too short by about an inch that I had to raise up and do some modifications. So make sure you double check, triple check your rough openings that are bigger than your windows. So these vinyl windows, if it called for a 4060, that's four foot wide, six foot tall. That is the minimum for your rough opening. Your vinyl window is about a half inch smaller, three eighths of an inch smaller, which isn't almost quite enough. That rough opening should probably be even a little bit bigger than that. You need that room for shimming. You need that room for that pre-wrap to roll inside that, that opening. So. If you're wondering what pre-wrap is, check out some of my other videos on the window install and the waterproofing and that sort of thing. So, but double check, it's important. Double check your dimensions, make sure they're all in line. Everybody, every now and again, makes mistakes. 
as you're going as you're building double checking those dimensions see everything's right see everything's square uh, if you wait too long eventually it becomes either a major problem or <clears throat> it gets it doesn't get fixed so checking all those things on the plans we're all human you know even though we've been doing it for a long time i've been doing this for over 23 years i make mistakes too so uh double check is never gonna hurt takes a little bit of time but it might save you a lot of time later and a lot of heartache so all right guys this is the last lesson learned and it's i don't know if it's so much a lesson learned it's something that you just got to think about uh during the de design phase and that is do i need an addition do i need a little taller ceilings do i do i really want that post in the middle and that sort of thing all those sorts of things for adding on making taller changing big structural things needs to happen down in the design phase before your prints are even made those changes are relatively inexpensive and cheap to do at that time and i do say relatively because it's still going to cost more money but if you were to change it later on it could cost quite a lot if you're going to remove a beam or a post to you know have a bigger opening or something like that it might be a structural thing that could cost uh dearly later so uh think through you know your speakers your wiring your all those sorts of things as you go and try your best to stay ahead of it so <clears throat> that's it for lessons learned at this phase of the project uh, i could go in depth of a bunch of other things but i think this is enough for this video um, but hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you're thinking about some things uh went for your home build and uh like always be safe out there uh, if you're not sure, you know, hire a good contractor, a good reputable contractor that uh, has a good reputation. So, you know, they're more likely to be there on time when you need them and do things right. So, uh, like always, I'll see you next time on the home build.